Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Umano. Interesting content read to you by professional voice artists. Stay informed on the go. Umano is available for your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Download it for free in the App Store or on Google Play. U M A N O. For more information, visit umanoapp.com. Welcome to another delightful episode of i5 for the iPhone, the show where we pick the best five iPhone apps, news, tips, and tricks, and share them with you and your cats. I'm Sarah Lane, and I've got a pool full of good times. Shall we dive in? Number one, I would like to start us off today with some free stuff, specifically free apps that usually aren't free. You might say, what's the occasion, Sarah? I mean, it's not even my birthday. Well, we're coming up on the App Store's five-year anniversary, and Apple wants to give you all some thank you gifts. So games like Infinity Blade 2 and Tiny Wings are free. An app called Tractor DJ, normally $20, which is very high for an app, is free. My very, very, very favorite recipe app, How to Cook Everything, is free, normally $10. Even Barefoot World Atlas, which is a real must for kids, we've covered it on iPad Today in the past, Leo and I love it, also free for a limited time though. So get them, get them while the getting's good. We'll link you to the full list of free apps in our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. And if you're watching the show way after the fact and all these apps are no longer free, I'm very sorry. Number two, we got a video duh tip from Philip, who has an app free way to convert articles into audio files for Mac users running the latest version of OS X Mountain Lion. It's pretty cool. Let's watch. Hey, Sarah. I love to read articles on Instapaper, um, but no matter what I do, I save so many articles uh, to read later that I never get around to doing it. And yet, uh, I love audiobooks, I love podcasts, and I thought it'd be great if somehow I could turn these text files uh, into audio files so I could listen to them as I walk around. Uh, I just discovered, uh, totally by accident, in Mountain Lion that there is a way. Here on my MacBook, I'm looking at an article on the New York Times website called Computer Visionary Who Invented the Mouse. I'd love to read it, but it's pretty long. So what I'm going to do is click the Reader button, which turns it all into text only. Then I select all, and I hold the Control key down, and amazingly, here under the Services menu, is an option which I've never seen before called Add to iTunes as a Spoken Track. And it shows up. It just takes a few seconds. And there it is. With iCloud, it shows up right there on your phone automatically. Computer visionary who invented the mouse. It's pretty cool. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> no, no. Thank you, Philip. Obviously, this trick only works in Safari, and your iPhone and your Mac need to be using the same Apple ID to sync via iCloud. Important step. For a while, I couldn't figure out why this wasn't working for me. You need that same Apple ID. You can also, though, choose from a bunch of different voices. Some of them are weird, like bad news. Isn't it nice to have a computer and hysterical. Uh, okay, Apple. Number three, while we're speaking of audio, how about a little weekly iOS 7 update? You know, we've been doing this over the last few weeks to keep us all on the same page about what's cool and new and different and upcoming. Well, 9to5Mac is reporting that Apple's testing an offline version of dictation voice input based on a string of code that they noticed inside iOS 7 beta. Now, currently in iOS 6, if I use the dictation feature to enter a string of words, remember to pick up milk at the store later. 
something hands-free, whatever I want to dictate, whatever, that data needs to get beamed into Apple's cloud servers, then recognized, and then sent back to my phone, which sometimes works fine, but the whole process can seem slow, or it could just not work at all, especially if I don't have an internet connection. That happens to us sometimes. Having a local version of dictation right on our phones would be great, you know, pulling up emails or text or notes or that sort of thing, local stuff. Now, in case you're already running the developer iOS 7 beta and saying to yourself, wait, hold on a second, this feature isn't working for me, apparently it's still an internal Apple test not anything public facing as of now. So again, it's worth noting that while we wait for iOS 7 to get its official release, there's still time for features to get added and or yanked and don't get too attached to any one feature just yet. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Umano. Thought-provoking articles, they're written every day, but you don't have time to read them all. Who does? Wouldn't it be great if you could just listen to interesting articles the same way you would an audiobook or a podcast? A solution is Umano, an app that discovers the most intriguing articles and news stories from a variety of trusted sources and has them read to you, not just read to you, but read to you by professional voice artists. Listen whenever it's convenient. It might be during your commute or your workout, during dinner at home, browse a wide selection of topics and publishers, personalize your news prefs, make playlists, and share your favorite articles via email or social media. You can download it for free on your iOS or even your Android device. Yes, we're even Android friendly here on i5. Again, professional voice artists will read it to you. Articles cover lots of different topics and can be filtered based on the subject matter or the themes and completely commercial free. No ads at all. Perfect for your workout, your commute, housework, or any time and available for free on both iOS and Android devices. Download Umano for free from the App Store or via Google Play today. That's U-M-A-N-O. And for more information, visit umanoapp.com. Number four. A few weeks ago-ish, a little note-taking app called Vesper launched in the App Store and it got a lot of attention because Apple god of sorts John Gruber was associated with it, among others. I decided not to talk about this app because it seemed to be missing a big important feature and that's syncing functionality between multiple devices. Turns out the makers of Vesper have heard this criticism from other people and actually say that they left out sync on purpose in order to kind of keep Vesper simple. It's an iPhone thing. The idea is you collect notes or ideas or things to do, pretty much anything that you want to remember and, and, and come back to later. You can add tags to entries so you can group related items into collections that kind of act like a playlist. You can attach photos to notes. That wasn't available right away, but it's available now. You can use drag and drop functionality to reorder your items easily. And if you want to archive any item, you just swipe it. If you need to access it later, you can check your archives. It doesn't go anywhere, just kind of gets filed away. So I have mixed feelings about Vesper. First of all, I do agree with a lot of those reviewers in the App Store giving it one star because they say, this is a fine app, but it needs syncing to replace my notes or my reminders apps in iOS, which are native already. I mean, we're all usually next to our iPhones. I sometimes sleep with it, but not always. Sometimes I want to be alone. I need my stuff to be accessible on my computer is the point I'm making. Also, Vesper is $5. That is steep for a notes app, especially when there are a lot of other notes apps that do somewhat similar things to Vesper that are already pretty nice. This is a great app. Then again, maybe it's just enough functionality and simplicity to be the one for you, to be the right tool for you. It certainly works fine. It looks nice. I just feel it's a little unfinished yet. Finally, number five, we got a great little Siri duh tip from Moses who writes, did you know that you can edit your Siri request by tapping and typing on the transcribed request? Say, for example, Siri hears me say longboarding, but doesn't quite get that it's one word. No problem. I slide up, tap on transcript, type the changes, hit return, and things happen. This is the most useful when you have a free hand and Siri doesn't know a word or the pronunciated word is ambiguous or has multiple spellings. 
Thank you, Moses, and I agree that pronunciate is a word. I know some of you will say that having to correct Siri defeats the purpose of Siri in the first place to be a voice alternative to just typing out commands, but at least you're not always forced to start your query over if you and Siri don't get it right the first time. Well, I think that does it for this episode of I've... Oh, no, 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 one more thing before we go. I want to address a little note that we got from John. He's got a bone to pick with me. He writes, I really appreciate the high production value and useful content your show provides. I'm taken aback, however, when the camera zooms in on Sarah's phone. It is a scratched up piece of junk. The show should have its own device that has less wear and tear or Sarah needs to get her iPhone fixed. I hear that, John. My iPhone is junky. Looks junky, feels junky, and the lock button doesn't even really work anymore either, so I've got lots of problems. The annoying thing is, is I don't really want to get an iPhone 5, a new iPhone 5, before the 5S or 6 or whatever it's called comes out later this year. I know I'm not alone. We're kind of in that weird holding period of a few months. Or maybe I could just go into a genius bar and, and ask really nicely for a new phone and maybe drop Leo Laporte's name. Maybe. I'll try that this weekend. If you know somebody who has an iPhone, and we don't care how scratched up it is, and might really like regular app tips and iOS tricks from this very show, show them how to subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash i5, or just search for us in your favorite podcast app. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own, like Philip did today. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you next week right here on i5 for the iPhone.